Welcome back. It's time now for the news review, and it's brought to you courtesy of Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic. And they say it's going to be the end to your chronic disease. But here's what they are offering for you. If you're a man, they're offering you prostate screening for free. Free. You won't pay anything. If you're a woman, they're offering you fertility screening as well for free. Just make your way to any of their branches here in Accra at Spintex opposite the Shell signboard. There's Kumasi, Kronomabwe here behind the Angel Educational Complex. There's Takradi Anaji State, Tema Community 22, Techiman Hanswa, and Esiama and Zama. Their call lines are 0244-867-068 or 0274-234-321. Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic, the end to chronic disease. But just the start of the news review right here, and we're pleased to bring you he is a political scientist, also director of the Center for European Studies at the University of Ghana, Dr. Kwame Asasanti. He joins the conversation. Doc, good morning. Good morning, Ben. Good to have you. Now, as always, I'm going to give you your two minutes or so. Uh, share your yeah. thoughts on anything very pertinent that you'd like to share. Now, for me, uh, I don't know whether this will serve as a guide. But I, mean, I know you have your own point. But for me, two things. Um, the way we've organized the, the African, all African games and the sums of money, over 200 million that we claim to have spent on it. And I'm not talking CDs, I'm talking dollars, right? And the showing on the medal table, then you also consider the fact that people, I mean, facilities, basic facilities that our athletes need, they didn't have. Some of them said they were getting these a day before their events. Someone was given a, a shoe size of 36 when the person dons 47. All kinds of chaotic uh, uh, stuff. So you ask yourself, was it the show of organizing the, the event or building our athletes to dignify our country? So that is one. The other bit is Dumso. It's becoming very erratic. Recently, I listened to Samuel Dubik Mahama, the, the managing director uh, of the, the electricity company of Ghana. And um, you can feel his pain, but there are also things being hidden, and it's not just to do with ECG, because they, they are just you know, distributors. They are down the chain. The production of electricity, the lack of funding, the lack of fuel to turn the turbines and all of that, all of those are in there. People are saying, give us a schedule, give us a timetable, because right now, it's practically doomed. So, but the term is being avoided like the plague. These are two things on my mind, but what is on your mind? Yes, I think um, I share your, your, your concerns, uh, but I'll depart right. a little to uh, the sub-region and look at uh, an equally disturbing issue, and I'll go to Nigeria. Right. Uh, I am not happy about the events in northern Nigeria. Oh, that the you kidnapping? And I, yes. The 300 going or on. so. Mm. Yes. And it's the latest. And uh, if you look at the fact that you are talking about kids, who people have come pick them and taking them to where we have no idea. A few years ago, you and I witnessed what happened in uh, Chibok, the Chibok girls yeah. and the rest of them. Um, it is a big worry and that these are people who are going to be leaders of Nigeria one day. And people are now taking them, have a field day, taking them, go and hide them, and do all manner of things to them. What are they leaving in the minds of uh, those children? Uh, you know, the, the pain is going to be indelible. It's going to create all manner of what, psychological problems uh, for these young people uh, who have been abducted. Um, I, 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 I am so surprised that the Nigerian government uh, is sitting down for this thing to happen. Nigeria uh, is the fourth best armed forces. They have the first, uh, fourth of the best armed forces in Africa. It is about the 35th in the international system. They have all the military power. Nigeria army has engaged in all manner of operations, difficult ones, and they have merged as what great soldiers and all that. I'm not sure this is out of their reach. And I will, if everybody will go against Nigeria, I mean, I support them because I know 
the army and what they stand for and what they can do. But maybe the question, will, maybe the question, Doc, is, is the political will there? That is, that is what I'm coming to. Mm. That what is preventing Nigeria government for supporting this great army to defeat these people once and for all? I am so surprised. It is not the army, I, 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 I must say. It should be a problem with government. And that is, shows the weak capacity of the government to what? Uh, resource it military and then let them work the way they ought to work. Because I believe if Nigeria army is giving all that they need, I can tell you in no time they will root out these uh, criminals from the system. We, it's so worrying. And the, my, my fear is that, uh, you know, if this thing is not kept, uh, it's likely to have effect in neighboring countries and then the sub region and all that. And I believe and I will urge the Nigerian government that they, do, they should do everything within its power to be able to support the Nigerian army and then root out these criminals from the system. It's very, very unfortunate. It's, very, it's, it's not safe to be in that place. But where do the people go? Their own land. They are there. They are not what at peace. All right. We vote government into office to take care of our lives and our property. And we will be obedience to the state is compulsory simply because of the social contract that government will protect us and we will obey all right if this thing breaks down where do we go it's unfortunate nigeria government should do the need for all right they have to sit up most definitely and it always breaks my heart when these things happen because like you said there's that as students of politics we know there's that social contract where historically people yes. have ceded their power to yes. a certain nucleus of people to manage affairs uh, mm. and, and on the other hand, they also are given certain responsibilities and, and rules and regulations they must abide by. But if that social contract is broken, and look at Africa, that is why some people would even point to the 1992 constitution and say that in there, you are supposed to guarantee our livelihoods, even economically <laughs> speaking. We must have jobs to do and all of that. It may be a stretch taking it to court, right? But it is there. You must safeguard the economic, you know, uh, privileges of the people but uh, government in and out and country uh, here and there they fail to do that sometimes you ask yourself so what do you do in the end because i don't like you mentioned the chibok uh, girls that situation yeah. and the sad thing they would usually take girls a lot of them and you know what happens they end up raising yes. a lot of them indoctrinating them they become mm. wives too early and these are young girls Teens, they brought some of the others. girls with babies, with yes. babies, yes, with babies. Very unfortunate, very, very unfortunate. And well, that's my fear. Because as a journalist and somebody who has worked for, uh, you know, International Club of Children's Rights, I believe that this is a call to duty. I must speak on this matter. Thank you so much for sharing your passionate thoughts about that. Let's get into the papers now. The Ghanaian Times, uh, they say they are the most authoritative newspaper. And Quanta Communal... Uh, or communal conflict, lay down arms, engage in dialogue. OT Regional Minister-designate appeals to feuding uh, factions. Then there's Telecell brand officially launched in Ghana. You know, Vodafone is becoming Telecell. And then NDC government will investigate land looting in Ghana Dangbe area. Ex-President Mahama says so. As for the land and the, the buildings that have been sold, those ones, time and again, uh, only God knows. President opens Maiden Africa Energy Technology Confab in Accra. And there's in sports. Ministry of Youth and Sports dismisses claims over late arrival of equipment. Oh, sir. So our athletes are lying. That's what you're saying. I'll get into that story uh, shortly. I, I find it difficult that the athletes will lie <laughs> just so when they failed in, in their disciplines or something of the sort. Accra Alliance aimed to deepen Kotoko's uh, woes and... Um, Kumasi Asante Kotoko, Krobia Kumasi Asante Kotoko, my team, yes. Uh -huh. They are in their quest to bounce back from last weekend's defeat to Kerala United, will face off with inform Accra Lions in their week 21 Bet Power Ghana Premier League fixture at the Babayara Sports Stadium today uh, in Kumasi. And uh, it remains to be seen whether Asante Kotoko will be able to deliver. But let me get to the story. The Minister of Youth and Sports, Mustafa Yusuf, has dismissed claims by some members of the team uh, that is going to 
at the ongoing African Games that they did not receive equipment and kits for their respective events. He was responding to claims by a section of cyclists and badminton players that they were affected by the lack of equipment to train adequately for them to compete. Now, at a press conference organized by the Ministry of Youth and Sports and the local organizing committee in collaboration with Team Ghana Federation heads, Mr. Yusuf stated that the complaints of the athletes were untrue. We requested from the various federations the type of equipment they needed for the games. When they submitted the list, we went through with them before procuring and delivering to them. In some cases, we chased the athletes for their sizes, and it took forever to get these requests for them. There are timelines to meet to get these gear and equipment down to Ghana. So sometimes the challenges don't come from the sports ministry or the L. OC. Furthermore, some of these federations take the items and instead of giving them to the athletes, they take it and do not hand them over to the athletes, he said. This makes no sense to me. You are preparing your athletes. If someone is not abiding by what must be done and you know they are not going to perform, what do you do? Do you still go ahead and enlist them? knowing very well that they don't have what is right to, to go there. And this whole bit about some of the federations will take their stuff and not deliver to them. So what do you do as a sports ministry? We always want to find excuses. Like, and how about, uh, Mr. Sports Minister, you organize the opening, opening ceremony, event, and you are charging 150 CDs. Ordinary, you know, stand. 150 CDs in this economy when you could have made it practically free, at least for the opening ceremony. So you see how many people were in the stadium for the opening ceremony. Beautiful opening ceremony, but how many people were there? What, what picture does that paint? I mean, what thinking? But I'll have time for this in my blunt thoughts on Friday. It's one of the areas I'll tackle. Um, uh, Doc, I know you are passionate yeah. about sports. I feel there's a whole lot going wrong, going ill with our sports. What's your take? Yeah, I think it's unfortunate uh, we are reading uh, stories like this. And the ministry should come clean on this. If there's a problem, let us know. If you have done something wrong, admit it. And then correct it immediately. We move on. And going forward, let's plan and plan well so that we can ensure value for money. We struggle to get resources. And this is an opportunity to showcase our country, our culture, and then our sports. So uh, we can fail. I believe that we have to what, have this thing at the back of our minds and work at it the ministry should come again and should come again. Lay down arms, engage in dialogue. OT Regional Minister Designate appeals to feuding factions. So uh, let me, I, that story is supposed to be right. I thought it was page three, but it's rather page eight. All right, so let's get there. Uh, feuding factions and the communal conflict at Nkwanta in the Nkwanta South Municipality of the OT region have been called upon to lay down their arms and engage in dialogue to settle their differences amicably. Now, the OT Regional Minister Designate, Deputy Superintendent of Police, uh, retired Daniel Machato, who made the call, said development of the region depended on peace as a prerequisite for progress and therefore imperative that all chieftaincy disputes were addressed amicably for a conducive environment to spur development in the OT uh, region, to spur on development. And so that's the story. And then... Telecell, a leading tele telecommunications brand in Africa, has officially launched in Ghana to provide innovative telecommunications solutions to connect and empower customers and communities across the country. In February 2023, Telecell Group successfully completed the acquisition of 70% shares of Ghana Telecommunications Limited to become its majority shareholder, with the government of Ghana holding a minority share of 30%. So I guess... That's the new kid on the block, though it's basically Vodafone transforming or transmogrifying into uh, Telecell. Let me do this last story from page seven, and I'll come to you, Doc, for your reactions. So here we go. NDC government will investigate land looting in Gardangbe area, ex-president Mahama says so. So the flag bearer of the National Democratic Congress in the 2024 elections, John Dramani Mahama, has promised to investigate the looting of lands in, Gand in Gandangwe when voted into power as president. Among other things, he said he would establish a commission of inquiry to look into lands that were given to the state for specific purposes but had been looted. Interacting with traditional leaders in the Great Accra region as part of his Building Ghana tour, which started on Monday, he said his promise was in line with the law which enjoins the government to give back lands which were no longer going to be used to serve the purpose for which they were given 
out. Uh, those are the stories. Any quick reflections on them? Yeah, I'll start with Zinquanta. Uh, mm -hmm. It's unfortunate uh, we are having such development. Um, it's a terrain that I know very well, and uh, it's unfortunate that uh, you have, um, you know, family members fighting uh, among themselves, among the Chala and the Chadi uh, groups, and uh, some of them. It's very, very unfortunate. It's my hope and prayer that um, they'll come together, smoke peace pipe, and then restore the peace in that area. That place is a very, a very beautiful place. Uh, you will love it. A uh, long distance, and um, you know the serene, beautiful. On top of this, is a notable area for agriculture production. Large, you know, hectares of yeah grown there, and other farm what products there, and it's also one of the best routes to the north. As soon as you cross the Oti, you are in Bimbila, move away to Yendi, the rest of them. You take, uh, you know, Pasa area, then you are moving to. Uh, the, uh, the 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 Kitikrachi area. Uh, That's a very uh, active commercial area. So uh, I pray uh, that whatever there is the need to do, uh, all those who matter, I'm talking about stakeholders, should put themselves together and make sure that uh, there's peace in that area. Um, I know also that the area also has potential for what tourism. If you go and see. Uh, the land uh, map, uh, you see uh, forest cover, you see even wildlife, amazing. Uh, so uh, I pray uh, that uh, people will quicken their effort and make sure uh, that they restore peace. And I'll urge, I'll plead, I'll plead uh, with the leaders, the chiefs, that they should come together and then uh, fight for peace and then restore uh, that uh, uh, peaceful environment I'm back so that uh, uh, people will live in uh, in peace. I'm told that people even attack people on their farms and all that. All these things are worrying situation. It's, I plead, I I plead with them. I plead with them that they should maintain peace. Um, I will look at um, the issue of uh, uh, JM uh, saying that when he's giving the mandate, you will look at Gandangbe land which is being looted uh, with impunity. Uh, it's unfortunate we have such development, all right? Uh, if you look at Gandangwe lands, uh, the whole city uh, rests on that. Um, it is true that they have ceded some to the state by way of law and compensation. But look, uh, I think that we are giving them a raw deal, a raw deal, that the little that is left with them, uh, people are using all manner of means to take it away from them. Uh, it's unfortunate. Uh, sometimes, too, there is also a problem from uh, the traditional authorities, some of them, uh, who also, you know, um, do not appropriate these things properly, and it creates all manner of problems for the state. I am particularly worried about the situation where uh, state officials uh, could knife what, uh, you know, other people within the industry uh, to, to sell state property to themselves. Very, very, very unfortunate. If you, you, you acquire land and you are not using it, uh, from the era of Professor Kasim Kasaga, we realized that it must be uh, given back to the owners. Why are they delaying? And why are you, uh, you know, creating that problem? It is unfortunate. We must know that, look, the people of Ga and Gandangba Gandangbe region have really supported the effort of this country a lot. Look at the land that we set on at UJ and other places and all that. They've supported this country a lot. So the little that is left for them, that is by law, must be given to them. Must be given to them. Uh, we should not find ways of taking it away from them. And then one thing that also hurt me is the uh, Ben. Do you know the reason? why Cape Coast was, the capital of Ghana, which was in Cape Coast, was moved to Accra. The, the main reason, or one of the reasons, let me put it that way, is to is because uh, the place was so neat and it was so close to mountains, the Kwapim Ridge, which is also healthy. So they decided to move the state to here. Uh, today, what do we find? We have destroyed this place. Um, it, uh, it's, you know, most of the places is filthy, 
and the rest of them. In spite of the president's own promise, uh, we have not seen a thing uh, relative to uh, what we are seeing now. It is my hope and prayer that we would do all it's under our power to be able to restore Accra back to its original state and make sure that uh, lands that belong to Ghans, they have them. Because it is the only property that they have. When they lose it, that is uh, the end. Uh, let us, uh, I will support the call of GM and that if, that is if Ghanaians are able to give him the mandate, uh, he should walk the talk and make sure that Ghans are not deprived uh, of their means of livelihood. It's unfortunate. Um, maybe the last one I'll touch on is the Telesau, um, uh, Vodafone, uh, you know, changing color to Telesau. It's good. But uh, I want to believe that uh, we will still have the quality of service that we had under uh, Vodafone and that uh, employment will also be what guaranteed. We have a lot of youth who are parading our streets they finish all manner of schools and they have no job. Uh, we want to urge them that that direction is also important for us. So they must put in a lot of what uh, programs to absorb these people, train those who do, they need to train them and make use of them. And then we too also, as uh, consumers of their product, we should be faithful uh, to them. Uh, they cannot give off their best when we undermine the very industry that is going to feed us. So it takes to two to tango. So we must also do our bit to make sure that this uh, business survive and survive in this country. Let's do the Daily Guide newspaper now. Telesel officially launches in Ghana. We've already been into that. Election 2024, EC shoots down NDC drone operation. And then AG drops charges against Dr. Anemana in ambulance case. You remember that one? I'll get into it. And then there's also NLE boss elected ALE vice uh, president. On the back page, some sporting news. Justice Blade begs Kotoko fans as they host Lions today. Dreams drawn against uh, Stade Malion. Uh, Dreams FC have been drawn against Malian Giants. Stade Malion de Bamako in the quarterfinals of the 2023-2024 CAF Confederation Cup campaign. The draw for the knockout round of the competition was done on Tuesday, March 12, 2024 in Cairo in Egypt. Then... Napoli boss faces fine for pushing cameraman. And Napoli president Aurelio Di Laurentiis uh, could face a heavy fine from UEFA after he pushed the cameraman in an ongoing spat with Italian uh, media. Some things you simply cannot do. But let's do this drone uh, story. So here we go. A plan of the National Democratic Congress to deploy drones to monitor the December general elections has been shot down by the Electoral Commission. The NDC in the Greater Accra region had earlier announced that it would deploy drones during the upcoming uh, general election. The regional chairman, Emmanuel Niashimo, who announced this, said the deployment of, of drones was part of efforts to secure 2 million votes for the party in this year's elections. Mr. Moore said the aim was to strengthen the NDC's monitoring systems to prevent potential rigging adding that preparations were well underway to commence the training of constituency executives on how to use the drones to monitor ground activities. However, the EC has stressed that such a move would constitute an invasion of voters' electoral privacy and a breach of security protocols, and thus it will not be allowed. The EC's Director of Electoral Services, Dr. Srubo Kweku, responding to the strategy by the NDC on radio, said the EC had not received official notification from the party regarding the deployment of uh, drones. And the final story. The Attorney General has dropped all charges against Dr. Sylvester Anemana, a former Chief Director of the Ministry of Health who was standing trial alongside Minority Leader Dr. Kassila to Forsen for causing financial loss to the state. Dr. Anemana was standing trial together with Dr. Forsen and private businessman Richard Jakba for willfully causing financial loss of 2.37 million euros to the state through a contract to purchase 200 ambulances for the Ministry of Health, among other charges. This is a story, Doc, I know you are very familiar with. What is your take? Um, I don't know. Um, to be honest with you, I have not been following the story. And, uh, what, um, the ambulance one? Yes. Okay. Now that but, but you know yes, the foundation so. of the story, right? It's been in the, in the news for years. 
Yes, yes. But to be honest, I'm not seized with the facts of the okay. matter and all that. So right. let me move on to look at uh, the NDC drone fair. Right. Um, I believe that um, um, a program of this nature, you need stakeholders in election uh, to discuss this. Uh, it will not be out of place to table it at IPAC, look at it, you discuss. And uh, if stakeholders believe that it is the way to go, why not? Because, you see, in election, any attempt at doing something that will mar the process need to be forgotten. Right. Uh, so uh, I believe that much as it's an innovation and all that, uh, the stakeholders are important in this business. Look at it, of course, with inclusion of the, the security apparatus, looking at it, whether uh, it doesn't invade privacy, whether it affects the electoral process and all that. Right. Once uh, you come out with uh, a decision from this group of people and it's right, everybody will defend you at each time. So I believe that this must be tabled, discussed at the appropriate forum, and then let them find what solution to that. So, so quickly uh, on that, I agree with both sides. One, um, it shouldn't be close enough to determine who is voting for whom. That would invade privacy. But on the yeah. other hand, consider, for example, what happened in Yendi, right? Imagine we had drones. We probably would have known, because you can't have cameras on every situation. If we did, we probably would have known whether indeed there was a slap by uh, the member of parliament for Yendi or whether the journalist was being untruthful. So there are both angles to look at. Yes. And where there are skirmishes, why... for example, what happened in Techiman South, where some people mm. were unfortunately killed, Maybe we could yes. have better footage and know yes. who did what. So there are different yes. angles to the conversation. Yeah, and that's why I'm saying that the stakeholders should look at it. Right. Because if it's a good thing, I am not sure that uh, people have the courage to shoot it down. But if it is not, they will also what, express concern about it. So it must be discussed. Uh, you can't throw it away just like that. It must be discussed and then they find a better. Maybe you would like to operate no closer uh, to where the, the, the polling is taking place and the rest of them. All these things will be part of the discussion so that whatever comes out as what the decision be owned and protected by the people. All right, so let's wrap with the next uh, few stories. Bank of Ghana predicts 13 to 17 percent inflation by December 2024. Uh, that's in the middle spread of the paper, but the last few papers and then we can go. I believe I'll just do uh, the new finder and uh, the Ghanaian publisher. So there's um, BDAC strengthens Ghana-India business uh, relations, and there's school farms back government to support with partial grant land development seeds and fertilizer. You see this point, uh, we pictured here is Dr. Brian A. Champong. I have said this time and again, when we were in school, we were weeding, we were farming, we were growing our own maize, yam, among other things. We were eating well. Okay, it was, even then when we were complaining about, oh, beans, the oil, and this, and weevils, and the rest, it's not like what we are seeing in our schools today. Why did we even stop this, this kind of system? And today, our school people, S -S SHS, are going hungry. Let's not even pretend. They are hungry. If parents are sending 100 CDs per week just to supplement, what does that tell you? What does that tell you? You go for cocoa, there's no bread, there's no sugar. What, 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 what is that? So it's high time we did this, and if we are going back, well, better late than never. And the Ghanaian publisher, will Baumia also pick a woman? Uh, <laughs> that's the question in the picture there. Irene Natoshi Adolati, uh, Akosia Fremo Osei Opari, of course, uh, the chief of staff, and then Ursula Owusu Ekofo. Uh, those are the picks there. Uh, th those are the stories. Any quick reactions? We have a minute, yes. and then we go. Yeah, you remember, Ben, I did uh, suggest here on this network right. that we should bring back what uh, school farms you yeah. recall no we, we we've right. had a, a, an agreement on that i yes. don't even know why we yes. stopped that thing yes and i am happy they are going to do that but they should walk the talk because <laughs> you know growing up as a child at the Kropon ptc demonstration junior secondary school we had farms sector we had big farms all right why can't you do the same we can if these things are managed well you can what produce to feed the in, the students and then you sell some to yeah. what uh, your neighbors or yeah. the neighboring or the, uh, the communities mm. where you can raise what IGF they can even go into what water production there 
produce look, water. Look, Doc, you are, you are into this. I'm even thinking some of the, the schools where the situation is right, maybe location yes. and all, can go into yes. aquaculture, even fish farms. Aqua. They can do it. Yes. I, I said that uh, the previously. I said you can start with what you can add fish. Uh, that's tilapia, uh, catfish. And then you can go to poultry. Yeah. And then depending on the suitability of the land, you can produce certain crops, certain other places you may not have. You exchange them and then you supply other places. And you can generate IGF, support the school, tell government, don't bring money. Let me run uh, these things here. And then use the resources. Just, 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 support us, just support us to do these things. And guess what? Especially the students who may be in agri, who may be interested yes. in veterinary, yeah. whatever, or maybe um, animal husbandry. Maybe right from there, they acquire certain skills. And, and right from secondary school, even before getting to the tertiary level, they are able to do something for themselves. What would that do yes. to unemployment? Yes. Because already yes. they are gathering the skills. Yes. You can do and all of that. Even, even here, you can get people yeah. who will have even uh, different areas of studies. They are science students and all that. But they will be engaged. I have a friend who went to Denmark to study. Right. And, and he was studying mm -hmm. agriculture. And they taught him how to work, keep books, accounting books. Today, he's a chartered accountant. He's right. a Fifi Ham. Can you imagine that? Yeah. That little, you know, uh, you know, course that he took in Denmark today has developed to become the best for him and all that. We right. can start this. Right. And I'm happy. And mm -hmm. it's just it should not be just a mere talk. They should support it and then make sure that it works. Right. And that will be the game changer. We don't need to import anything. Uh, and then bring to what schools. We can feed ourselves by what feeding on what we produce. Right. Thank you so much, Doc, for joining the conversation. We are very grateful. Dr. Kwame Asante, political scientist and director of the Center for European Studies at the University of Ghana. Thank you so much, Doc. Well, here we go. We're getting into sports up next, but this segment brought to you by Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic. They're offering free prostate screening if you're a man, free fertility screening if you're a woman. Reach out to them at any of their branches in Accra at Spintex, opposite the Shell signboard, Kumasi Kronomabwe here behind the Angel Educational Complex, Takrade Anaji State, uh, Tichiman Hanswa, and Esiama in Zima. If you'd like to um, give them a call, the numbers are 0244 867 068 or 0274. Two three four three two one. End point homeopathic clinic. The end to chronic disease. But sports is up next. Kotoko will be one of those on the radar. Will they be able to redeem themselves in that match today? Stay for sports.